Hey, welcome to this presentation. I'm going to hopefully make it so you can understand the Zeek Spicy WireGuard Protocol Analyzer. My name is Keith Jones. You can get to me through my website, drkeithjones.com. I got all my social media links, and if you want to contact me, you can find it through that website. Um, while you're out here on YouTube, if you want to um, be alerted when new videos like this come out, please do click subscribe. And if you like this video, please click like as well. That would uh, help me out to have people find these type of videos a lot faster than um, the first few people that come and see them. All right, so here's a link to the Zeke Spicy WireGuard protocol analyzer. So to install it, you can just do a ZKG install Zeke-Spicy-WireGuard. And the reason why I picked this analyzer versus other ones was because of the simplicity of the protocol. So what I'm trying to do is walk you through how the analyzer does what it does inside Zeek. So that way, later on, you can hopefully pick up another protocol analyzer and sort of do the same sort of analysis to be able to understand it with the, hopefully the goal later on to pick up a protocol and write your own uh, spicy protocol analyzer. But that'll probably be a video or two down the road. So let's just back up and let's just try to understand WireGuard. So usually the first thing when I develop protocol analyzers for Zeek is I go figure out what the protocol is. And it kind of depends on what the protocol is to find the, um, the, the technical documentation on it. So in the case of WireGuard, it is on its website, it's just wireguard.com slash protocol. And any links you see here are clickable, and I'm going to put the slides in the YouTube link, so you should be able to get to them directly as well. So what I did is I just cut out the page there. Um, on the left-hand side, I'm showing you how it lists the WireGuard protocol, but then I just highlighted a couple spots on that web, like that web page on the left. I highlighted a couple spots and pulled them out on the right-hand side for you. So one of them is the handshake initiation and one of them is the handshake response. And <clears throat> a lot of protocols, their specifications are like this. So usually if you find an RFC of a protocol, their specifications are a lot like this, where they kind of give you the programming structure on what you're going to see on the wire. So in this case, um, it's saying that U is UINT8, U32. Excuse me, U8 is UINT8, U32 is UINT32. Um, you can see with the square brackets, we have arrays. <clears throat> uh, what else? Um, some of the arrays are fixed. So like the ones at the bottom, the Mac 1 and Mac 2, you can see are arrays of size 16. Uh, the ones that are a little farther up are, well, one of them is 32. The other one are based upon a function, this AED length 32 and AED length 12. So whatever those compute to is the size of those arrays. If you go down to the bottom, this is an example handshake response. There's um, <clears throat> the uh, stuff at the beginning looks very similar. There's message types, there's reserved areas. You can see um, there's the UA, so there's U32, so we know what sizes of these fields that we're going to be dealing with. And we also see arrays in there and you'll see all this stuff in the spicy code as well. I'm not going to do a one-to-one -one comparison, but I'm going to walk you through the spicy code here. I just wanted you to know where you could go to see the protocol outside of Zeek and spicy. If you were to do the same thing that we did in building this open source analyzer. All right, I have a whole bunch of caveats, and one is I created this protocol analyzer. Well, first of all, I'm not the only author on this. So when I say I, I mean we, if I haven't said we. Um, but when we created this protocol analyzer, um, well, I, I created the, the template to put it into with the ZKG create. And my point is, is when I created it, 
my version of ZKG Create was new then, and that was, I'd say, probably a year ago, maybe more. Uh, ZKG Create has come a long way since then, so it has changed how things look. So if you were to watch one of my prior videos on doing Zeke Spicy, uh, just the just generic, um, the ZKG Create, and I did some videos on that, and I'll link one here. But if you follow those videos, they're going to be slightly different than this version of WireGuard that we're looking at because it was created with an older version of ZKG Create. Not a big deal for you when you're installing it or anything else. It's just the organization and some naming conventions have changed since then. So some of the differences um, I um, highlight here in the, the slide for you, you got instead of the WireGuard.evt, the file is named analyzer.evt here because that's just how it was done in the old days. Instead of the Zeke underscore WireGuard at Spicy, we got Zeke underscore Analyzer at Spicy. And you're going to see basically the trend, even the third bullet there. The WireGuard at Spicy um, was actually named Analyzer at Spicy. And it's like everything didn't have the Analyzer name. It had the word Analyzer in it. So that was one big change. Uh, another big change is instead of putting the scripts in the Analyzer directory with the Analyzer and the Spicy code, it actually separated it out into its own scripts directory, um, which also, again, doesn't, shouldn't affect anything from a user standpoint. It's just where you go as a developer, where you're expecting to see files and so forth. And, um, you know, if you have some kind of install process that looks into a specific directory for specific files, you got to make sure that you know about these different changes. So that's why I'm talking about them now. So. Why did I pick WireGuard for this example? Because it's one of the most simple ones out there and it's we have an open source example of it. So I'm going to walk you through almost all the source code, believe it or not. So this is analyzer.evt and the line numbers on the side there, left-hand side. So from one to line eight, all of that sets up the analyzer. There's a whole section, uh, spicy, Zeke Spicy has a lot of really great documentation that if you haven't visited, I recommend that you visit because they document everything. I mean, just all the function calls, all the different types of parsing types, um, you name it. I, even stuff that's coming in the future um, that's, you know, the support's coming, you'll see like call out boxes. It's really great documentation. So. This section that I'm showing you, this, like, if you don't understand what this means for word for word, you can go straight to the Spicy website, pull up the documentation, and figure out what every one of the single of these words are. Because I'm just going to talk through the concepts. So the first two lines basically just call the other parts of the Spicy Analyzer that we have in our source code directory. Lines four through eight, then set up the analyzer. One of them on lines four and five set up the traditional wire guard analyzer. So what it's doing is it's saying on line four, this protocol analyzer, it's a protocol analyzer and not a packet analyzer. So it means we're going to have connections as opposed to just packets. The uh, analyzer name is spicy colon colon wire guard. That's all generated by the ZKG create. It's over UDP. We're going to parse it with Zeke spicy wire guard colon colon wire guard packet. And I'll show you what that is in a minute. Line seven through eight is a tail scale analyzer. And this is something I added because tail scale actually uses um, wire guard under the hood. So what I'm able to do is actually parse up part of the tail scale portions and then pass on the rest of the wire guard to the wire guard portions. And what that lets us do is our traditional wire guard analysis on our tail scale traffic, which is really pretty cool. All this is really great stuff that spicy gives us. And then lines 10 through 18 are, 
on the left hand side it says when this thing happens when this event happens in spicy fire this event on the right hand side and Zeke. So it kind of ties the spicy and the Zeke together. There's the left hand side has spicy units, and the right hand side has the Zeke events. And there's the arrow in there that basically says when this thing happens, so for instance on line 10, when we parse the handshake initiation unit, it's going to call the Zeke event called handshake underscore initiation of the wire guard namespace. And then you see it's going to pass the connection to it. It's going to pass is a ridge to it. And then a bunch of other variables I'm going to talk about in a second that actually exist in that variable on the left-hand side, which is our handshake initiation. So back in the day when you used to do that bin pack, it wasn't this simple. You couldn't just make fields and plug them in and have events and so forth. So there's a lot of simplicity here in one screenshot of... Um, a very complex process that happens behind the scenes. Now, our first spicy source code file, we're going to look at Zeke underscore analyzer. Now, again, if you're going to use the newer version of ZKG create, it's going to be ZKG underscore wire guard, for instance. But in our, since we use the old version of ZKG create, it's just called Zeke underscore analyzer. If you're wondering why it looks different. But in this case, we're going to um, take a look at it. And basically, this line one through six just imports things and makes the module name. And the line eight through 10 then says, when you parse this handshake initiation, the percent done means the done, uh, the done hook. So basically, when that happens, which means we parse it successfully, we run line nine, which says to Zeke, confirm this protocol. So basically, Spicy's kind of testing the protocol up until the point you run a line like line number nine, and you say, okay, it is exactly what this is. And usually when you ZKG create something, this is commented out. So um, you can see lines eight, line 12, and line... 16 all have confirmed protocols for uh, the different wire guard um, packets that it would get. And then, um, and, and one of the reasons I believe I put the, these in here at the time was to, um, like, if you were to get partially partway through a connection, you could still confirm a protocol if you see a connect one of these packets, which would be partway through it. That makes sense. Um, lines 20 through tw uh, 30 are the reject protocol. So basically it says, I'm sorry, not line 20 through 26 though. So line 20 through 22 and line 28 through 30 are a reject protocol. What that says is when the error hook for that packet or that unit uh, is raised, it then tells the to reject this as wire guard. So basically, in layman's terms, it says, if there's an issue parsing up this unit, reject the protocol so Zeke doesn't say this is wire guard. Uh, line 24 through 26, that's just me confirming the tail scale packet just like I did in the wire guard since um, just a little bit up the slide. Now, analyzer.spicy, this is basically the guts of the program. This is, or the analyzer. When you compare it to the protocol that you see online, most of it, this is where it's going to match because this is, this is the guts. Uh, we will walk through a, a, pretty much all of it. So I have all the line numbers again on the left-hand side. Let me walk through this for you. So line three just says, this is what my module name is. Um, again, this is kind of boilerplate that gets set up and up front, uh, along with line number five, which just imports um, spicy code. Now line number seven is saying, okay, we want the little Indian byte order. That's how you say it in spicy. It's awesome. It's very, very simple. And then lines nine through 12 is 
the message type enum. So instead of having to remember numbers, we can remember names. So names of message type being handshake initiation, handshake response, cookie reply, packet data, and so forth. We have functions. So um, we talked about the AED length earlier. Well, this is the actual function here. So if you want to know what the math was behind that, there you go. Uh, so lines 20 through 29, this is our first unit. And basically this is how Spicy will parse up the data on a field by field sense. And you can see it starts with WireGuard packet. And earlier when you saw, if I can back up. Here on line five, WireGuard packet, this is the unit that we're now discussing. So it's saying, try this unit first, or this is the unit you need to use to parse up wire guard data so when we're setting up the analyzer that's how these pieces are tying together so um line 21 is just a un8 and then line 22 is just the reserve section it says it's bytes three bytes and it requires the bytes to be all zero so you could do all that in one line and spicy you can say, I want a byte, but I want three of them. And it has to be a certain um, uh, number. And there's other ways of doing this. Um, you could have um, used like a regular expression, for instance. When I or the original person that wrote this, um, it's just a different type of syntax to do the same thing. So then line 23, we got a switch on the message type and we get to use the enums that we just introduced earlier. So we got the handshake initiation, handshake response, packet cookie reply, and the packet data. And depending on what type of message it is, it parses the next type, which is on the right-hand side of that switch statement. So on the left-hand side, it says, if the message type is this, the arrow is parse the rest of it like this. And the first thing um, with the handshake underscore initiation colon, that is the name of the field it's parsing. And it's parsing the unit handshake initiation, which has the caps camel case on the right hand side there. Okay, so this is the rest of the whole source code. So. I'll try and walk through it for you. Um, so we have the different packet types. Um, these are all the different other units. Remember the switch statement? And there were the different type of units that it parsed. These are all the different types of units that it parses. It's um, listing them out just like we did with the WireGuard packet. So the handshake initiation, the handshake response, packet cookie reply, and the packet data all are each their own unit. And they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, if we start with the initiation, the handshake initiation, we got the sender index is a uint32. We have unencrypted ephemeral is bytes, but it's 32 bytes. We have encrypted static and encrypted timestamp are bytes that they're arrays, but since they're bytes, they're arrays of bytes. And the size is the AED length 32 and 12. And you'll remember that, that I talked about that at the beginning of the video. This is how you do it in spicy land. It's just, you put the size and you put this function and it just, it does it for you. Um, let's see, we got the Mac. We got the two different Macs, each of them 16 bytes. And then we have a nothing field that is bytes. And the ampersand EOD says, eat up the rest of the data until the end of the data. The ampersand require says the size of this field. So the absolute value, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign is the field. So the absolute value means the size of, and it's saying the size of equals zero. So it's basically saying nothing should be zero. All right, the handshake response. Again, um, I'm gonna skim through most of this. 
There's a couple of UNT 32s. There's a 32 byte ephemeral. There's an encrypted nothing, and that is driven off that function AED length again. There's a couple of max like before, and then there's a nothing just like before. All right, if we look at the packet cookie reply, we have nothing real special in here either. All the concepts that I talked about in the initiation apply here as well. It's just different field names and so forth. And then the packet data, it's a uint32. The counter is a uint64, so it's one of the larger uints. And then the encrypted encapsulated packet bytes EOD, basically it just eats up the rest of the data into that encrypted encapsulated packet. Now if we, so that was line 62. If we go to line 64, line 63 was a, just a new line. We got byte order is now big. So we're actually switching byte order to do tail scale stuff. So line 66, we have our tail scale packet, which puts a little more information up front than we had for just the wire guard alone. So you can see in line one, uh, line 67, there's a magic and there's bytes and it's just one byte. And what it does is it runs this hook, which is in the curly braces at the end. So let's go ahead. This, this is line 68 through 75 is what it's running. Uh, on the, the done hook. Or basically, once it finishes parsing the magic single byte. So, it has a local underscore magic that it takes the value and it converts it to a uh, actual uint. And it gives it the byte order to big. And it takes, based upon what that value is, assigns the self dot has discovery, it's either going to be true or false because the Boolean's uh, established on 78 and 79 down below. So we're basically saying if the magic is this number, it's has discovery equals true. Line 70 says, if the magic has any of these numbers, it's has wires guard. And this is how I was able to detect if a packet was a tail scale packet, like a tail scale proper packet or if it was just plain old wire guard stuck in between which is what tail scale does and i knew this from looking at pcaps and so forth so this is my way my logic of saying how to parse this pa next packet whether or not we're going to parse it as a tail scale packet which is this has a discovery thing or we're going to parse it as a just a proper wire guard packet so Line 72 says, if has WireGuard, meaning we these next packets are WireGuard because we did this comparison up in line 70, we're going to take this thing self.data. And you go, what is data? Well, it's line 87. It's this, it's a sync. And it's kind of like, I mean, it's a sync. I don't know how else to describe it, where anything you give it will then be parsed by the next packet type. And what we're doing on line 73 and 74 is, well, on line 73, we're connecting that sync to the wire guard packet type. So that way, when we write data on line 74, we're parsing it as a wire guard packet that we just established on line 73. I hope that makes sense. So that's all driven through the sync on line 87. Now, um, since we've got these two Booleans on lines, um, or I'm sorry, on line 69 and 70, we can use them to do a little more parsing. So on line 81, I say parse it as, as a tail scale discovery packet if it has discovery. So if that Boolean is true. And um, if... Let's see, basically lines 80 through 85, then take any extra data if it's WireGuard and then writes it to the sync. Um, so 
it writes the dollar sign, dollar sign. So it writes the data that it then reads through the sync. And the write's a little bit different than uh, line 74 because in line 74, all we did is we wrote the magic, basically the information we uh, ha had read up until that point. So lines 90 through 96 is the tail scale discovery packet. There's just a couple fields on the front that make it a little different. There's the magic, which in fact is actually five bytes, but we only needed to see one to do what we needed to do up above in the source code. But in a tail scale discovery packet, it's actually five bytes. And you can see there on line 92 that it requires those five bytes of um, hex 53, F0, 9F, 92, and AC. Now line 93 is the sender disco pub, which offhand I'm forgetting what that even stands for, but it, um, it's, it's defined in that wire guard or, um, no, not the wire guard because this is tail scale. So, um, I believe I pulled this out with Wireshark, and I believe it's like discovery publish. It's like a name or something like that. And that's 32 bytes. And then there's a nonce that's um, 24 bytes. And then the rest is the payload. And that just, the EOD, end of data, it just eats up the rest of the bytes. And it interprets it in Big Endian order, which is pretty neat how we're able to switch Little Endian and Big Endian all in the same spicy program very quickly like that. So how does our analyzer get triggered? I prefer when I can to use D uh, dynamic protocol detection signatures, and that's what DPD.sig stands for. And these are the two signatures that I use. So we have two analyzers, the wire, the wire guard one and the tail scale. And I know what these different packets will look like. Um, so based upon that, I'm able to make a regular expression that you see on lines three and nine. And then both of them are UDP. So that's why we have two and eight. And then lines four and 10, all that does is it says either enable the spicy wire guard or enable the spicy tail scale, which were the names that we set up in the analyzer.evt file a little earlier. So let me show you that again. If you can hold on. So here you see on line 24, it says protocol analyzer, spicy colon colon wire guard. Line seven, protocol analyzer, spicy colon colon tail scale. Those are the names. So when we need the names for our dpd.sig, that's where it comes from. So that's why we're saying when this regular expression hits on UDP, enable wire guard or enable tail scale doesn't mean it's always going to be that protocol when they're enabled because you remember earlier we had some logic in our spicy code that says you know certain fields had to be required to be a certain value and basically if it's parsing something that starts with this but doesn't have one of those values it knows that it's not wire guard and it's not tail scale and it just uh, rejects the protocol which is another function we talked about earlier and then it just, it's not detected as that, which makes it really nice and easy. So we're going to go through the main Zeek. So this is the Zeek code, and it's probably the most involved code that we have in all of this. So line one, we're setting up our module. We're just calling it WireGuard. Line three just says we're exporting these portions of our uh, Z code or our module line four says we have a new log and we're just instantiating that log here line six is a log policy i'm not going to go into that because it's just a generic Zeek thing it allows you to uh, filter on what logs are actually logged to the log file but we want everything so we're just we're going to leave this boilerplate type of stuff lines 12 through the end that's the log record. So we have our timestamp, a UID, our ID, all that regular, usual suspect kind of stuff. But then we have our sender index, our establish, our initiations, and our responses, which are just some statistics that we give um, uh, 
uh, per connection in that wiregun.log for an analyst to look at. So we move on to main.zeek and we have the log wireguard event on line 32, which is how we can look at the logs even before they make it to the logs in Zeek land, which is pretty sweet. Line 35, which is actually broken, you see there. Um, it's a really long event. That is the handshake initiation, and it has all those parts broken out. And you remember from the analyzer.evt file, these are the fields that line up with the fields that we had on the right-hand side of the arrow in that evt file. But this is the Zeke land, so this is what we um, have known and grown to love uh, in Zeke language. Um, you know, it's not the dollar sign is a ridge because that was spicy language, but in here we see like is a ridge bool. So we have just the standard um, Zeke variables there. Line 38, 41, 44, 47. Those are all the different events to deal with the different units that we parse up in spicy. Now line 55 through 57, we're just adding the wire guard info record on the connection so we can save information, state, state information. Line 59 through 68, then it creates the, um, it, it creates the default state. So a lot of times you call this the first time you see wire guard on a connection and it'll create the default state if it isn't already there. Otherwise, uh, and that's line 61. If it is already there, it just basically doesn't do anything. Now, um, line 70 through 73, create the log stream. So it creates this new wireguard.log and it connects that log policy thing that I talked, talked about earlier there for you. Line 75 through 80 is how the handshake initiation is dealt with. And you can see it calls that set session that we just talked about. And then it basically adds information to the info record. Lines 82 through 88 do sort of the same thing for the handshake response. And then depending on what version of Zeke you're running and what you have available, it'll either run this hook called finalized wire, wire guard or it'll run the old trusty, it'll handle their old trusty event connection state remove. So since everybody uses connection state remove, there's this new thing, or I guess newer thing in Zeek where you can actually do a finalize hook and basically say, I want to run this hook when I'm done with this connection and it'll run that hook when that connection disappears. And it's to basically ease some of the pressure on the connection state remove. So all this says in line 90 through 94 is it's saying, depending on which version of Zeek you're running, run either the hook or run on the connection state remove. Now, um, one of the other things I wanted to show you was an example B test. So here at the B test, it basically prints out all the events and it loads the analyzer and the B test at the top, it runs this WireGuard PCAP and it looks for a con.log, it run, looks for a WireGuard.log. And then it also looks for the standard out, which is all this garble you see me printing out between line eight and line 26 to just give you a bunch of output. You know, and you can go into the repo here and look at some of the baselines just to get a little familiar with the logs and you can see um, one of the, um, well, I'm showing you the traces on the left-hand side there. That's where they are in the repo is actually the testing traces directory. But I'm showing you that um, one of the logs in the, well, it's actually the conduct log in the WireGuard test. I'm showing you with the box there on the right-hand side that it detects it as WireGuard. And let's see. 
if you click on the wire dot, wireguard.log example, here, here it is. There was just one connection, so there was one line in that log. Remember, it's kind of like a stats log, and it fits that info record that we took a look at earlier. Well, I really, really hope this helped. Uh, some people that have never looked in a spicy protocol analyzer, I hope it helps you understand it. And I hope it helps um, not only understanding protocol anal analyzers, but I hope it also helps you someday venture into writing protocol analyzers because there's thousands of protocols out there that we still don't have support for for Zeek. So anybody that can um, contribute in any way to these spicy analyzers, it's, it's definitely appreciated. So if you like this video and A, you want to hear about more, click the subscribe button. But B, if you like the video, please click the like button down at the bottom as well. I appreciate the time you took to watch this presentation and I look forward to seeing you on the next. Thanks. Bye.